Good morning, hey there, this is Rob Tuttle, and uh, just wanted to document a little bit for you, for those of you who are thinking about getting into beekeeping. Um, let's see, April 2019, excuse me, 2020, will be uh, when I actually get my bees for the first time. So right now I'm just kind of preparing a spot for them. Um, you know, this is, like I said, this is my first time having bees. So pretty awesome, uh, really been thinking about it for about the past four or five years so I've joined a local bee club um, you know doing as much studying and reading and everything as I can so uh, I get two nukes uh, April 2020 like I said and I just kind of want to show you and, and take you through a little bit of what I'm doing to prepare for them so behind me basically what you're gonna see is I've got an area here marked out it's a uh, what uh, 8 by 16 so those are just landscape timbers you can get there at Home Depot. Um, got a, found a couple cinder blocks around the property. So got these cinder blocks and stacked them up so that, you know, we're about uh, a foot or so off the ground. Um, you know, that way the beehives are not sitting directly on the ground. Not that there's an issue with it because, of course, seen plenty of people with that. Uh, but I wanted to have them up, raised up just a little bit so that, uh, you know, easier to service. Um, I'm putting down this weed block so that I don't have to get as close to the bees uh, to be able to mow or weed eat or anything like that. Hopefully I can uh, relatively leave them undisturbed, uh, except for when we get into the hive. So I'm going to take you around a little bit and show you kind of what we've got going on here. We've got uh, scuppernog grapes. So they're kind of like the muscadine, but scuppernogs. Um, so I want to put the bees down here with those. And around here in the woods, there are tons of blackberries. So wild blackberries, uh, there's a couple big, huge blueberry bushes not too far away. Uh, and then we flip the camera around here a little bit and I planted a few things here too. So we've got a uh, fig plant there, uh, a couple hydrangeas over there, uh, lavender and big snowball bush. And I know those, and I know those are not big, heavy, pollen producers necessarily for bees but I just wanted to be able to block uh, some of this road noise some of this road traffic and you know once you once these start to grow up it's really gonna make make a nice um, uh, wind block and everything else for them so anyway um, I do have a well house over here to the left and show you that and that's where I'm gonna tap into some water uh, I'm gonna tap into some water for the bees over there make a little trough and so forth probably see in the distance I've got a sawmill um, pasture there's a couple farms nearby so really I, I feel that we should be pretty good as far as the layout goes for the bees uh, they should have plenty to forage around here uh, we are out in the middle of pretty much nowhere not really looking to get any honey this year or next year of course um, it'd be great if I do but we'll see how the bees do. My main goal, honestly, is just to keep them alive and, and uh, you know, maybe you can split a hive and, and grow into three or four or who knows. Uh, so anyway, just want to document a little bit of the first attempt here. And I'll just walk you through a little bit what I did as far as the actual bed that I just created. So the bed here, you can see I've already started to put some of the mulch. I'm gonna use the black mulch uh, and just kind of line the whole thing. Ran out a little bit of weed block, but that's fine. It'll be towards the back of the hives. Not, not too worried about that. Uh, really, my main thing is I wanted to make sure that the front of the hives here, um, this is going to be facing south. That's facing north. So you can see it's already starting to get sun here. So uh, they'll get a little bit of uh, shade, kind of a broken shade in the mornings, but in the afternoons, they'll, they'll pretty much have full sun. But I did put some big old spikes here in the uh, in the landscape timbers to be able to kind of keep those more solid. Uh, and then once I fill all this up here with the landscape mulch, it'll make a really nice bed. Now, one of the things that I did here uh, in one of the classes I took was about using black mulch to help reduce the amount of uh, beetles or varroa. Either one of those two. From my understanding, the mulch the black mulch especially gets really hot in the summer and so if varroa or the beetles 
land in that, uh, actually they die because it's just too hot for them to live. So that's my understanding. I'm sure there'll be somebody out there putting a comment or whatever to correct me if I am wrong. But if I'm right, then great. You, we all just learned something. Anyway, I'll be documenting more as I do more. So stay tuned and check back often. If you learned something here, just hit the like button. I sure would appreciate it. And we'll talk to you next time.